friends. Before I go into my thing, like, who would say they, like, actively post on social media? Who thinks they need to post on social media way more? <laughs> who has no idea what the heck... I'm going to try so hard not to swear, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, who has no idea what they should post on social media? Right? I'm just flamingos all day. That's all you have to do. I'll tell you that one right now. That's branding. It almost made the presentation. I'm not even going to lie to you. <laughs> um... So when we think about like growing on social media, like what does that mean to you guys? Anybody can speak up. Like when we think about like growing a social media following, like what is our intention with that? Having leads, organic leads come in. Love it, yeah. Anybody else? Just like establishing rapport with people you've never met so they feel comfortable coming up to you and talking about what you Yeah, building like a fan base almost, right? Um, I'm just gonna use this example. Remember how we met? <laughs> Literally that, right? Sean walks up to me one day and he's like, oh, I follow you on social media. <laughs> like, you seem cool. And I was like, that's debatable. <laughs> um, anybody else? I'm glad nobody's like saying like, oh, I want to get more likes on my post because I was going to be like, get out of here. <laughs> like, that's why our entire generation has anxiety. I'm just um, trying to get more likes. Yeah. Yeah, here's some anti-anxiety medication too. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Literally. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, yeah. I think everybody in here knows me. If you guys don't know me, um, I've been in real estate since 2019. I launched a company called Lily in 2020, 2022. Sorry. I like to say my company is about six companies in one. Um, so we have Sell to Lily, which is our acquisitions company. That's where we like fix and flip homes. That's where we buy and hold rentals, stuff like that. So with Lily is our realtor team. Sean is our go to agent over in Spokane right now. Um, general contracting company where we do all of our own flips. Lily University where we do things like this, where we give out free training, free resources, all that good stuff. I say free lightly because Jake said we had the charge for this one. It's his fault, not mine. Invest with Lily where we have a partnership program. So if anybody in here wants to like partner up on a deal, we have a whole partnership program. I like to say in real estate investing, you have to solve deals, capital contractors. If you're missing one of those, we can fix that problem. And then finally a fund. Um, so this is like a brand new thing, but we just started, recently started the capital program where investors can actually place money with us and then we can help other investors fund their deals. So this is kind of my world. I like to start every presentation, which is like our core values. So like what we believe as Lily. Um, so first and foremost is like just make life enjoyable, right? Like if we're not having fun or if we're not enjoying ourselves, like why are we doing it? Like we live in an industry where like we can leave tomorrow and nobody's going to bat an eye. <laughs> Like, we're not having fun. Like, stop. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, enjoy your life. You know what I mean? Be unapologetically yourself. You'll probably hear me say this a couple times today, but nobody can compete with you on being you. Nobody can be a better Tim than Tim. Nobody can be a better Jeremy than Jeremy. Nobody can be a better flamingo expert than the flamingo expert AJ, right? Whatever. We should also count how many times I say flamingo today, but besides the point. I think we three. There we go. <laughs> three too many. <laughs> Uh, and then finally, like you can escape competition through authenticity, right? Everybody in this room has a story to share. Everybody in this room is cool. I promise. Be unapologetically yourself, right? Live in reality. Um, I like this one, right? You have no money. Great. <laughs> you're brand new. Great. <laughs> like you're crushing it. Great. People doubt you. Great. Like live in reality, right? Like what is the actual reality that we're in right now? Because once you live in reality, you can make choices off that. You can make choices off data, not feelings, right? Everything is your fault, my fault. Has anybody read the book Extreme Ownership by Jocko? If you haven't, you should. But basically just start saying every single thing is my fault. And it's insane how much more responsibility you take on. Talk less, listen more. It's always funny when I'm in the front of the room talking. <laughs> But more or less, guys, like, people's ideas have values. Like, you don't know everything. Ask a lot of questions, right? Talk less, listen more. Keep it simple. It's only rocket science if you make it. Um, does anybody feel like social media is, like, rocket science to them? I promise it's not that crazy. <laughs> it's only rocket science if you make it. Be a go-giver. Give more than you get. I think everybody kind of picks up on that one. I don't think there's a single person in this room that doesn't feel that way. Done is better than perfect. Does this resonate with anybody? 
especially social media stuff, right? <laughs> How many people have like thought about the perfect social media post or they're holding back from posting on social media because they're so worried about like the way it looks or like the response you could get or the stupid video caption that you can't figure out how to make on yourself like whatever right done is better than perfect because yes. follow me we can do anything but we can't do everything i have to like literally say this in the mirror 24 7 <laughs> anybody else a crazy person they want to have 19 businesses just me okay never mind <laughs> Never mind, I'm gonna go see my shrink after this. Um, but yeah, we can do anything, but we can't do everything, right? And then my favorite is delayed gratification and compound interest rule the world. So in this business, it's what you do on day one might not pay you till day 365. And you have to be okay with that. And yes, you're going to compound the interest as you go, but like it's really hard and a really hard concept to grasp of like, just in the social media world, right? I'm gonna spend six months posting consistently and I'm gonna see absolutely nothing for six months. But compound interest rules the world and it's only gonna stack and stack and stack. Can I make a comment on your done is better than perfect? I have a friend that uh, he was driving down the truck with another friend and they said, oh, that's great. We should go ahead and post that. And his truck is one of these big loud diesel trucks and everything else. So they pull over and, and he does this live thing right then and there. And like, instead of how many times have we all waited and said, oh, I'll do this later. And you know, but it's like they did it and they got like a hundred likes from that and great response, you know? So. Yeah, hundred um, percent. It's something I'm going to pick on her, but like our COO Jolene, we have to say it at least 20 times a day because she is OCD. She wants everything perfect. She knows it, you know it, it's just getting recorded because she watches this, <laughs> but like done is better than perfect. Like we have so many things rolling that it's like if we waited three months to make it perfect, well, we just lost three months of like action. You know what I mean? All right, so growing on social media so we can do cool things in life, right? Um, I also wanted to like make this super clear, like my presentation's not gonna say you need to post five times at 10.33 a.m. and then 12.14 p.m. and then all this other stuff, right? There's a time and a place for that, but like my presentation is going to be more around like the principles that like we use to like grow, right? But like this isn't going to be a thing of like go on Canva, make these 10 templates and then post them at 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m. on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, but never Sundays or anything like that, right? But I want to share with you guys like kind of the principles that we've done. And then I always start off stuff with like quotes, right? Anybody know these two? <laughs> if you don't, you should look it up. So it's Alex Hormozzi and Layla Hormozzi. Um, probably one of the two bigger names in like social media of like the entrepreneurship space right now. But I love this quote. He says, rather than picking up your next book, start taking action on your last book. Has anybody learned like 10 things and you didn't implement any of them? Do you feel called out right now? <laughs> I know I did. <laughs> My biggest fear with today is Jake and I do a great job presenting to you guys. We give a ton of value, stuff like that. And then nobody does anything with it. Right? In our Invest with Lily Bootcamp, we start off with a quote that basically gets paraphrased into, if you read a book and you don't take action, you have no advantage over somebody who doesn't know how to read. Yep. If we learn things today, it doesn't mean anything unless we actually do it. Follow me. Anybody know who Seth Godin is? I'm surprised Jeremy doesn't know. Seth Godin owns the most popular blog on the internet. He has 20 bestseller books all around like entrepreneurship, marketing, things along those natures. Everything I've learned from marketing, I would accredit back to Seth Godin. Um, we're going to talk about Seth Godin a lot today. I'll be straight with you guys. But I love this quote. He says, persistent, consistent, and frequent stories delivered to an aligned audience will earn attention, trust, and action. But if I take this a step further, what I hear is consistent storytelling to an aligned audience will encourage them to take action. Do you guys follow me? And that's what I wanna pick apart today, is who should we talk to? How should we talk to them? If the strategy is video, that's great. That's why Jake's here, <laughs> right? But I wanna talk about how can we do consistent storytelling to our preferred audience to encourage them to take action. Can anybody kinda of like, just make sure I'm not crazy and like that's the point of growing on social media? Right, is to talk to your preferred audience to encourage them to take action. It's only rocket science if you make it, right? 
So I kind of mentioned this earlier, but like, let me be honest, I don't care how many followers you guys have. <laughs> I don't care how many likes post on post you guys get. Part of me honestly doesn't even care how many people see your content, how much content you post, anything like that. I think all of that is trying to be perfect and not done. Follow me? What I do care about is how much money you make in your business, right? That's why we do this whole thing, right? Humbly confident saying this, in the last two years, I can credit about $242,000 in revenue to social media. And I have a following of like maybe 2,000 people. I get maybe 35 likes on a post, unless it's like a really good post. But I'll be straight with you guys, like I get three to four people a week that say, hey, I like what you talk about on social media, can we meet up? Do you have any investment properties I can buy? Whatever it is, right? Do you want to, I'm not even going to say it. I almost said Flamingo again. I almost did it. So like I said, my goal is that we leave this presentation, I know, right? <laughs> uh, which is the clear idea of the principles around growing on social media, but not necessarily this whole, oh, you need to post five times in the morning and five times at night and then never post on Sundays because people are watching football and they're not checking whatever, right? It's like all that stuff comes later, but like the most important thing is done is better than perfect. Do you guys follow me? So one of my favorite concepts is if you have a thousand true fans in your business, you can make a hundred grand, right? So all of us are in the real estate industry here. We do a mixture of things in here, right? But so holidays are this week. Imagine if there was a thousand Thanksgiving dinners where a thousand people said, hey, if you want to buy or sell a house, you need to call Sean. What would that do for your business? If you had a thousand raving fans of your business, right? If you had a thousand people that would willingly go out of their way to come to an event on a Tuesday afternoon, the week of Thanksgiving, what would that do to your business, right? Straight with you, like one of my true fans is probably Stan. I think Stan's came to every event I've ever put on ever. <laughs> and yet he still doesn't use me as his realtor. <laughs> um, just kidding. <laughs> but whatever, right? So it's like, imagine if you had a thousand people the moment they said, hey, I want to sell it on creative financing, and they reached out to a certain person. Thousand people that as soon as they said, hey, I have a piece of crap home, they call Tim and not easy home buyer. Whatever it is, right? <laughs> That's what we want from social media is we want a thousand true fans. Mm -hmm. We don't want a millions and millions of followers. We want a thousand true fans. Do you guys follow me? Yep. So Seth Godin wrote this book called Tribes. And tribes, the way he describes it is he says, a tribe is a group of people large or small, who are connected to one another, a leader, and an idea. If I put this into perspective for you guys, it's a tribe is a group of large or small people who are connected to yourself and your business and the idea or the offer that you solve or the problem that you solve, right? This is my tribe. We just finished one of our last boot camp meetings. This picture was taken right out there, actually. But it's like, my tribe is a group of real estate investors who are connected to each other, followed by her, I guess I'm the leader, and the idea of wanting to buy one rental property every single year. That's my tribe, you guys follow me? Mm -hmm. Whatever your tribe is, that's what we'll talk about. But like, once again, I'm gonna beat this dead horse so many times today. I don't need a thousand people in my boot camp. I need 15 people that are connected to my tribe. Do you guys follow me? Mm -hmm. That's another thing we should count. <laughs> Potential tribes, I thought about this as a real estate agent, right? So when maybe you want to work with real estate investors, maybe you only want to work with out-of-state buyers, maybe you want to do only creative financing deals. Maybe you get super niche and you only want to work with people that sell houses on the South Hill neighborhood um, within five miles of Perry District Brewing, whatever it is, right? But it's like that tribe is powerful. We also live in a business where, like we can all agree on this, like we don't need to sell 100 houses a year just to like have a good like living. You know what I mean? Like we realistically need like, I would call it 15 to 30, depending on your lifestyle. So it's like, we don't need a hundred transactions in a year. We just need 30. So it's like, stop trying to market to all 11 of these examples. Start trying to market to the 10 to 15 that will actually transact with you. Do you guys follow? Sometimes silence, I feel like is good. And then sometimes I'm like, shit. <laughs> you get all the knowledge. I love it. I hope that's not all the way sarcastic. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Alex Ramosi again, he has a quote. This is probably my favorite thing as of lately. Riches are in the niches. 
Once again, we don't need the market to 12 different groups. We need the market to our niche that we want to serve, right? I know you're a title rep. It's like your niche is like real estate agents, right? You know, that's, I know there's more, don't get me wrong, but like it probably doesn't make sense for you to go market to insurance reps. It's not your niche, right? Riches are in the niches. So when I think about this, I think about, um, I see a lot of people's marketing pitch be, I help people buy houses. Well, that's too broad, right? Well, I help people buy houses in Spokane. Okay, that's a little bit better. I help real estate investors purchase one home every single year in the Spokane County and Kootenai County area. Niche it down further, right? Or once again, my personal tribe, I help real estate investors purchase five plus homes in the Spokane County area every single year. This is very, very niche, right? But that's who I want to speak to. Like the rest of it, Sean helps him out, right? <laughs> Whatever, right? But it's like, I want to help people that only do five plus homes in the Spokane County area. Everybody else, I get too involved with your business, to be honest. <laughs> like I have to like do more than five. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's like when we think about growing on social media, it's like how many people feel like they're doing something very broad and they're trying to reach millions of people, right? Mm -hmm. well, there's only a select few people in Spokane that would even do five plus transactions in a year. So it's like, I want to reach that tribe. Do you guys follow me? Mm -hmm. So I think the way you can find your avatar, or find your tribe, is literally like print out all of your last transactions and just go through it. I remember doing this vividly, like, because we were trying to take on anybody and everybody, right? And like, we did 58 transactions so far this year. And like, I'll be honest, <laughs> like, I didn't really want to transact with all of them, right? Whatever. Um, but it's like we printed out all of our transactions and we had a green part pen, like a highlighter, and then like a red Sharpie. And we just went through each and every single one of them and we said, who do we want to work with again? Green highlighter. Who do we not want to work with again? Red Sharpie. Never thought of them again. <laughs> There's about 15 red Sharpies. <laughs> if you're in this room, you know who you are. Um, <laughs> thankfully, none of them are here. <laughs> and then we thought about it, like what made us enjoy working with those people, right? What were their personalities like? And then more importantly, like what were the external factors that led them to work with you? Was it referrals? Was it that they know we invest in real estate? Was it that they understood creative financing? And was it that they found us on social media? Like what were the external factors that led them to work with us? So challenge anybody, like I think the way you can find your tribe and your business and the people you ideally wanna serve is go through your last transactions and do this kind of exercise. So now we know who we want to talk to on social media. You guys follow me? So I want you guys to imagine you're driving down the street and you see a brown cow and you're like, okay, brown cow, cool, whatever, right? You keep driving, you see more brown cows and you're like, okay, whatever. <laughs> you keep driving more and more and you see even more brown cows and more brown cows and more brown cows and you're just starting to get bored by every single brown cow that you keep seeing, right? And then eventually every single brown cow starts to start looking like the first brown cow you ever saw, right? And then you drive and you see this mother effer like staring you in the face and you're like, what the heck is this purple cow doing on this field? Like, how would you not tell your friends that you just saw a freaking purple cow, right? How would you not understand? Like, how would you not think about that later? How would you not pull over and like take a selfie with the purple freaking cow, right? <laughs> like it's a purple cow, right? So this is what Seth Godin talks in his book about is a purple cow, right? So it's like, the way I perceive this is like, how many people scroll through their social media and every single real estate agent or every single real estate investor looks exactly the same? Because they're all brown cows, mm -hmm. right? So it's like what Seth Godin talks about in his book is like, you wanna be the purple cow, but like being safe is risky, but the path to lifetime job security is being remarkable. So it's like, don't be a brown cow in your business, right? Like, do you guys get that analogy? Like if it was a freaking purple cow, how many people are gonna go home and talk about that for the next month, right? So what I see, and I just think this is a funny joke, how many people have seen agents be like, I'm an expert in my field, <laughs> right? The investor's laughing, I think that's what's funny. So it's like, guys, like we don't wanna be a brown cow, we don't wanna do everything that everybody else is doing, like we wanna be a purple cow, right? Um, I thought the got purple milk thing was funny. <laughs> But besides the point, like, we want to be a purple cow, right? 
it's like for me i like to use humor and things sometimes i'm funny but it's like how many people like would actually post a book of them reading the complete idiot's guide to buying home right or whatever the title is it's like guys like it was funny it attracted my tribe right i don't need to be this guy like i want to be a purple cow right i want to stand out i want to do something extraordinary something different than every other cow on the street just picking up what i'm putting on so once again like your posts and advertisements should not market to the masses they should only market to your tribe just follow me and then once you know your tribe and you know how to reach them you should make them an offer so good they would feel stupid saying no has anybody heard that expression before does anybody feel like they have an offer in their business right now that's so good somebody would feel dumb saying no? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so when I think about this for us, it's hey Mr. Mrs. Real Estate Investor, if we can say that anymore in 2024. But hey Mr. and Mrs. Real Estate Investor, we will help you purchase the property, then we will fund the property for you, then we will line up the general contractors for you, and then we will sell the property at the end of it. That is an offer so good that a real estate investor would say feel stupid saying no to it. You guys follow me? Mm -hmm. Or, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Real Estate Agent, we'll provide you everything you need to make $100,000 in residential sales. We'll provide you with the opportunities to invest in real estate. And we'll surround you with other like-minded people on the team. If I'm a real estate agent that's involved in real estate investing, this is an offer so good you would feel stupid saying no to. At least I think. We don't need to reach a million people, we just need to reach that thousand true fans. So now I know what to talk about, but what do I post? So I just kind of reverse engineer this. This is kind of my framework. What is my offer so good? Somebody would say no to it. Can I make posts about myself or my company? Can I answer common questions that like people would have about my offer? Guys, we're all in the same industry. We answer the same questions over and over and over and over. <laughs> like every single question your prospect asks you is a post on social media. Mm -hmm. What information would somebody need to know about your offer? Can we talk about client success stories? Can we talk about how to get involved within our community? And then what are some decisions somebody would make prior to making your, or taking you up on your offer? So it's like, if I'm a real estate investor, a decision somebody might make is like, should I list with the agent or should I sell it as is for cash? It's like, great, let's make post around that because that speaks to a niche. That doesn't speak to everyone. Follow me? So I always like to throw these in here. So I think these are easy posts anyone can do unless they just choose not to, that's on you. <laughs> I do a weekly update post every single week. I think I've missed two. And every single week, I just share the journey of what we're doing. Be straight with you guys, I literally just pull up my Google Calendar and I just pick out events that I did. <laughs> or like highlights for the week or whatever. Some weeks are longer than others. Some weeks I don't include all this stuff. I think that would be insane. I think people would actually think I'm crazy. Besides plan. Or if you're a real estate investor, like, hey, do you have a new project? What are you going to do with it? What's the plan? All that good stuff. Deals that you've passed on and why. Or if you're a real estate agent, clients you've passed on and why. I think that's actually one of the funnier posts you can do. <laughs> or like the more impactful ones. Lessons you've learned and how you're going to avoid them. Um, those weird funky things people will never understand that we see. Has anybody been in like a holy crap house lately? And you're just like, holy crap. <laughs> right? Post about it. People love it. Like um, I have like this infamous beer can house that people still to this day talk about. I posted about it three years ago. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, right? Point proven. Thank you. <laughs> and it was a photo, Jake. Just kidding. Um, I buy houses, looking for my next project, so on and so on. Progress pictures, if that's your jam, or if you have a client that has like a flip that they're doing, just progress pics. People love the journey. Um, decisions you're making, feedback from the public. So if you follow me on social media, you'll see I'm always saying like, hey, what color should we paint this house? Do you guys think we should frame in this closet? Blah, 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 blah. I'll be straight with you guys. Sometimes those decisions are already made, <laughs> but like, we want the clout, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but also we want to know if we're wrong. 
But the only rule is you have to be authentic and be yourself. Like no one can compete with you on being you, right? Everybody wants to do business with Stan because Stan is Stan. Everybody wants to do business with Jesse because Jesse is Jesse. Jake is one of those goofy guys that like people want to work with Jake because he's goofy and he loves people, right? Exactly, he's doing some weird shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, like the weekly recap post, I've done this every single week and I literally just pull up my calendar and I say, what did I do this week to share the journey that we're on? I think a lot of people get stuck in this framework of people, like they think they only want to see like the final product, right? They only want to see the full weight loss journey or they only want to see the after project or they only want to see whatever. Um, realtors, I promise nobody wants to see your just sold post and that's it, mm -hmm. like a promise. <laughs> it's one of the more annoying things ever, but besides the point. And then, so I challenged my buddy McLean, God, dude, I knew there was going to be an image that didn't work on this. It's annoying, I hate burbity. Mm -hmm. I hope that goes in the video too. I hate burbity. Um, <laughs> make this work. But essentially, I challenged my buddy McLean to do like a similar weekly recap post. He started doing it and he just shared how he bought a property on like a sub two wrap. And then he like kind of wrote, basically wrote out like what that meant. He said three minutes later, his buddy from high school messaged him and said, I need to do that with my house. So he literally bought a house just from a social media post. What's dumb and why I'm kind of upset at Burbity is it worked twice for him. Like he did it two weeks and both weeks he got to buy a house from it. It's like, I would pro like challenge you guys, like share the journey. Like everybody wants to, thinks they want to see the end result only, like share the journey. Another tip I would just give is like vulnerability and transparency goes a long ways. Like the more vulnerable you are on social media, the more people will get out of it. I promise. I get a text a week that says, hey man, I love that you're so authentic online. And I love that like you're not like inflating numbers or whatever words you want to put there, right? Vulnerability and transparency goes a long ways. Like if you're a real estate investor and you lost your house on a flip, post about it. <laughs> I promise more people will reach out than if you're like, I made 50 grand on this flip again. It's like, nobody cares. <laughs> like you get a like for that, right? <laughs> but the vulnerability piece of it gets you actual engagement. We want engagement, we don't want likes, we want action. You guys follow me? <clears throat> and then I just threw this out here, um, stick to one platform before you expand, as far as like social media goes. Like I see a lot of people that they're like, oh I need to do Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, TikTok, like, or uh, it's not Twitter, it's X anymore. Does anybody know that? It's X, not Twitter. <laughs> We're straight with you guys, half the time I forget Instagram exists. <laughs> like part of the reason why I'm reluctant to do video is like Facebook works for me. Like I don't want to venture off from it. But one of our core values again is done is better than perfect. So it's like if I can just be done and just do Facebook instead of be perfect and do 10 channels, well, I should just stick with one, right? So action items for me, so what I would think if I was you guys is who's your ideal client avatar? Who do you want to reach online, right? And it's got to be a niche. It can't be as broad as like real estate investors. No, <laughs> real estate investors in Spokane and Kootenai County, right? Real estate investors that want to buy fix and flip houses in Spokane County and Kootenai County, whatever it is. And then like truly think to yourself, like what is your purple cow? Like what makes you so unique compared to anybody else? So in a room full of, or in a pasture full of brown cows, you want to be the purple cow. What is an offer so good that your ideal client would feel stupid saying no to it? <clears throat> Whatever that is, figure it out, right? If I said my ideal client is that they want to live on South Hill homes, whatever, maybe an offer so good is that, hey, I will send you a market value report specifically to your neighborhood every single week on Thursdays. I will send you a list of every single home that sells in there. I will show you every single home that comes available in there and I'll also give you like a local guide to like living on the South Hill, whatever it is, right? But it's like get super niche about it. Once again, we live in an industry that we don't need to do 100, we need to do 20. It's a powerful mindset shift. And then finally, like how many true fans away from the thousand true fans, like are you? I'm just gonna pick on AJ. I know you're like, you gotta be close, man. <laughs> People love you. <laughs> it's like when somebody thinks about like 
literally i get it almost every other day probably they're like oh i want to buy off market deals like i'm a subscribed to easy home buyer but like yep <laughs> that's everybody you know but it's like in your business like how many true fans away from the a thousand true fans are you i think your thousand true fans are made up of past clients family friends referral partners anybody in between and then take care of them and that is all i had for you guys Also, video is stupid. Uh, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Just like awkwardly walk through everybody now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jake. Hey, Jake. <laughs> uh, who here is afraid of video? Cool. Here, so, okay. That was a little slow there. So, some people are afraid of video. Um,. Is it like if, if you're gonna go ahead and talk back to me? Do, is that because you think that you're gonna people are gonna think that you're stupid, or like you're afraid of judgment, or just because you don't like the sound of your own voice? Is it kind of a combination of those? It's not actually scared of it. It's just not you know having the knowledge to do it. Okay. Yeah. What What do you think is the knowledge that is needed? Right now, basically. Yeah. From yeah. A to Z. I mean, yeah. Fair yeah. enough. So at least for me, when, when I got started, I think the, I actually, I got started on with a competition with my brother because he just got into TikTok and I was like, and I've been making stupid videos my, just about my entire life. When YouTube first came out, I was like making really dumb music videos and stupid skits with my friends. Like that was me. I was that weird kid in high school that you didn't want to talk to because I was off making videos. <laughs> uh, but I got, I got into the short form stuff uh, because me and my brother made a competition with each other saying, hey, whoever can get to a thousand followers first wins. Like, I can do that. So I was just making a bunch of videos just to beat my brother and kind of d discovered incidentally that it, it could be a very powerful marketing tool. Once you get over that hump of, uh, I don't know what people are going to think about me. So I know you've all heard this before. Nobody cares. Yeah. If if it's not good, nobody will see it or watch it. So, like, if it's not a good video, they're gonna move on before you have time to make a fool of yourself, right? And if it's just bad enough to where it goes viral, then that's a fantastic video. I'll, I'll, if we have time, I'll show you an example. I made this when I was first like trying to veer my content. Like, I can do real estate content and try to figure out how to make it funny. Um, I made this video where I was like doing a, a home commentary, but I put it as a green screen behind myself and I was just being a total dummy. Like <laughs> this house is stupid and like, wow, this house is really green. You know, just absolutely dumb comments like that. It took off and got 300,000 views, a few hundred followers from it. Like it wasn't the best marketing video. Like not every video that goes viral is going to make you money. And just because it, it doesn't get a lot of views doesn't mean that it isn't going to make you money. It's all making those right connections too. So um, I, for me at least, one of the reasons why I, I really like video is less on the generating new client side. Even though that does happen, I just closed one last uh, a couple weeks ago. Got a referral from California. They moved up here, so I got a sell down there and a buy up here, which is really fun. Um, but and we all know that in, in real estate, you have to keep on keeping contact all the time with your potential clients or referral partners or whatnot. If you do have videos that start taking off, um, it kind of does that work for you. Even if it's not crazy, um, like you're not getting hundreds of thousands of views, maybe it's a few hundred but people are seeing it and still talking about it. And I think that that's where I see a lot of the value come from is when people talk about the content that you make, there's power in that conversation starter. Um, I, I was just mentioning this earlier when it came, it came to the room. I saw this video on YouTube the other day that was like, these guys were in front of a target or something like that. And they dressed up as mannequins. Like they put like white, uh, like, like onesies or whatever. It's like, they look like mannequins with clothes on from the store and they just posed like this and somebody would walk out of the store and they go <laughs> and of course it would freak the people out but I thought 
I mean, that that is the the purple cow, though, in, in terms of marketing. Like, I, the, I think the I guess the store kicked them out for doing that. <laughs> but I thought like that was stupid. Like that video, like got hundreds of thousands of views, mil millions of views, and uh, it, it'd have been great publicity for the store. And that's the kind of thing that like, I mean, like I'm talking about it as an example, but that's the kind of thing that people would like share with their friends, right? So like, if you focus on shareability, so I mean, even just step away from video for a moment, um, do test, like wh whatever your, is your like lowest threshold of testing things on social media, that you could do once a day and not get burnt out on, what is that thing? Because it could be video, but it also could be making a meme. It, like, when you focus on what's shareable, rather than, like people don't like to be sold to, but they love to buy. And so focusing on that, who is your tribe, is a really important question. But I think, at least, and this, this is more in terms of how I think about it, I don't think that it has to be like, um, a real estate community because home buyers and home sellers, what are they not? They're not communities, right? So it's really like they, they might come to your channel or to your page once in a blue moon. Your friends are going to see it and think it's great. Like, uh, and we'll talk about this later, but I think the fact that you're using story in your progression, Matt, is brilliant because people want to follow what's happening next. So you're developing a community of people that are interested, yeah, in your product, but also like what's happening with Matt. Like I'm curious what the next chapter is. Um, so if you can find like a kernel of like, I like to focus on hobbies. Like, I, I think that it's, it's more interesting when you find that intersection between how you make money and the thing that you really like talking about, or at least one thing that you really like talking about. Um, that would attract a crowd that you'd probably have an easier time talking to anyway. Like, I mean, does anybody here have a hobby? Okay, like, name, name some out. Fishing. Fishing. Bicycle cooking. Bicycle cooking. Real estate. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> like, if, I mean, if, if you are talking to a group of investors, like a few of you are, that, that is a community with a common interest that will keep on coming back to watch and listen to what you say. But that's different than like a, a regular casual home buyer, you know, first time home buyer. They're buying one home. Four years later, they might buy another, maybe 10. When you're an investor, you're thinking this stuff all the time, right? What are you thinking about all the time that you could connect with, with other people on that same, same grounds? I think that you'd probably have a lot more fun with social media if you weren't like, hey, who wants to buy a house today? I'm gonna go look at homes. Anybody wanna come with me? You know, like those, those kinds of postings, that kind of uh, messaging doesn't really come across. Like people dislike, like that's, that's why you hardly see in those infomercials anymore that are, are basically just that. Like they might show you the product and like, you should buy here or buy this. But like who's, who's one of the best salesmen in the entire world is Mr. Beast, right? Anybody watch his videos? It's incredible. But he's not selling you most of the time. He's just entertaining you. But, but like it's not, it's not too, I mean, he's a great uh, marketer and salesman and, and he knows his stuff for sure. But how hard would it really be to go from cooking to real estate? Like that's like, no, Ben's are over there, of course. And here's the big question, does it work? Like, I'm always thinking, here's my client's interests, and here's mine with the target of you know, selling a home. The intersection here is what I'm gonna focus on because that's what's gonna pull people into my sphere, into my world. So I wanna find that, that place where it, it, it overlaps. This could be cooking. It could be bicycling, it could be whatever. Um, and if, you, if you're developing a funnel, let's say, it could be something as simple as, let's just focus on TikTok or YouTube and then post a, a link to a Facebook group that talks about that one thing and then market yourself as the realtor of that group. Um, <clears throat> fishing in Spokane, biking in Spokane, cooking in Spokane. Or it could be national, right? Because then you, you're getting all those referrals potentially. 
um, I'm like, like, do, do any of you go to like a, a church or a club or, or something like that that you, you get regular referrals from? Like, same idea. Like, if you can find a kind of community on, how about like, do you, any of you have Facebook groups that you like? You kind of recognize the people on those Facebook groups. Like, hey, you're my buddy, even though you live in Australia. <laughs> I've never met you, probably never will, but I connect with you. Um, like those, those kinds of relationships exist online. And if you are the leader of this group, you have that kind of authority to start speaking into. So for me, a lot of that starts with video and then it, it goes deeper from there. Um, I, I know it's possible to like generate leads, like, you know, have, have your landing page straight there from your YouTube or TikTok or whatever. But it, I found it to be easier to make those new conversations when you're leading them into a Facebook group or like that next level down. That's not like as, a, as formal as here's my email. It's like there's that instant gratification if you're going from video to a Facebook group. Because like you're already, you feel safe in Facebook. You don't know about, you know, giving your, you know, whatever into a, a, a random landing page. You know, here's my email and my phone number and my social security number. And what, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. So you're you're attracting your crowd that way. Um, again, it's about stuff that you like to talk about. So I mean that that's why for me like. Maybe I'll really embarrass myself here, but has anybody watched any of my videos? So, so a handful. Um, you, and we were just talking, Jeremy, right? Mm -hmm. We were just talking like like you, you've referenced my videos to talk with other agents mm -hmm. and and people that like are like here do what this guy does because he's a goofball. And like honestly, and you would see one of my videos, you're like, hey, I could do that. Just copy it. Uh, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. <laughs> I can't see like you. Well, I like, like it doesn't have to be that, but <laughs> but I use auto tune. Uh, <laughs> um, so like it, it, I, I like that because I, I when I grew up, I really wanted to be a musician. So I'm like I, I can put my energy into this and my love, and um, I can be passionate about this thing, and I think that attracts a certain segment of the population to myself. So it's like if you stop worrying about like being the professional realtor, again, be the purple cow, you're, you're gonna end up having, I think, a lot more fun engaging on social media because now you're talking about the stuff that you like. Um, you know, for me, I just go a little personal, like it, for me it boils down to, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian, so my ethic that is boiled down to here is I wanna love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and then love my neighbor as myself. You know what I don't like in marketing is Boring marketing, <laughs> clogging up my feed. So I think if you reverse engineer the idea, how can I love my neighbor in the way that I present myself? And I, again, don't, don't take that as a reason to not experiment. I think you should experiment and be liberal about the things that you post. Um, but think in terms of what, what would my neighbor like? And again, if you want to test this with different things before trying on video first, see what would work. That's fine too. I think this, that short form is so easy to make. Uh, and we can talk about different strategies on, on ways to make that that are low effort. I think you should start with low effort first to figure out what works. Then go up from there as you develop skill. Um, or hire someone. <laughs> um, like say you make a meme about fishing. Um, or a post about fishing and you notice that like, hey, I've made 10 memes about fishing that my fishing group, like I share it into a fishing Facebook group and that meme, that joke did pretty well. well. Let me see if I can repackage that same joke or that same reference into a short form video that's 15 seconds long. Does it have a same, the same or similar effect in that group? So now we're thinking strategically about how can we go from low effort to larger effort? Okay, if that did well, then maybe it would be worth making a five minute video on or a blog on. Like, it's not just repurposing the same content that you made, but how can you like start pulling all the juice from the con or the, the idea, the kernel there? Because, you know, hardly anybody's gonna see the same post. Like you could make seriously the five of the same memes with slight variations, post them over the course of a month 
on the same platform, hardly anybody will see a duplicate. This, like for one, the people forget. Uh, two, Facebook most of the time is, is syndicating, or, or wherever you go, is syndicating out to various portions of your followers. And same for TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, doesn't matter. Uh, and like, by the way, like some of the best views I've gotten have been on Facebook, just posting reels. So, uh, do, do any of you guys have, have like a favorite platform that you focus on? What do you guys like? I use Instagram almost, it's usually all because then I can just post it, post to Facebook as well. Yeah, that's true. Um, now it, it, it all depends on like where, where do you want the, the traffic to go. Um, I find that, for, at least for me, whatever reason, the Facebook ones tend to do better most of the time than Instagram. I don't know why. Um, except for randomly, I'll get like, like I have one that's still like, if you have one that takes off and it takes off for like weeks, it gets really boring looking at everybody <laughs> like, like this one. I made this uh, one on Instagram that was just a Spokane joke uh, about our, our kind of unofficial slogan of Spokane doesn't suck. And it's got like 160,000 views, which by the way, that, that is a really good, like if you're really wanting to focus on only business in Spokane, that's a great intersection right there. Like if you want your content to be very heavily Spokane focused, because there's nobody really in that space. Like there's a few realtors out, like two realtors out there that are focusing on like, hey, I'm gonna drive to Liberty Lake and make some content over there. But then that's two realtors that you're competing with and not 3,000. And if you took it a step further and say, I'm gonna identify a smaller segment of the population in Spokane, where the riches are in the niches, right? If you identify that smaller population inside that Venn diagram, um, like you're, you're, you have a lot more power to start kind of engaging, interacting. Um, so I'll, I'll give you an example. Like, I, this this is like a cool thing and a thing to just kind of be wary of. I, I'm personally taking a step back from Spokane focused stuff. I want to think more nationally. Just I'll give you my my trade secret here. <laughs> uh, part of the reason for that decision is I I got recognized too often after a couple viral videos, and I was with my kids and I didn't like that. <laughs> so I was just like walking randomly in, in a Home Depot and I was like. You're probably getting tired of people walking up to you, aren't you? Like, maybe. <laughs> um, but I, that does, like, at the same time, if you're if you're okay with that, th I mean, think about how powerful that was. It was a stupid, stupid joke that I did um, that, like, maybe half the population in Spokane saw, at least the center city. Like, how how many po how big is the population in Spokane? Like, three hundred thousand. Like five something. Five something. Okay, so like a third, so like one hundred fifty thousand people saw this particular video, and then seventy thousand saw a different video. So it's like I'm I'm reengaging on this same uh, group of people, and that's not I, I didn't make an incredible piece of content. Like it's super doable if there's nobody in that space. You know, Spok Spokane content isn't being made a lot of. So like this like. Seriously, this is a, a segment, like if you're thinking about a topic that you could just talk about that's not real estate, but also related to um, like your area, that's a good one. That's a really good one. And like businesses know that this stuff is powerful. That's why like you walk into, I, I like to call this the pottery barn effect. And so you're, you're adding like an, a, a vibe or an essence to your business. When you walk into a pottery barn, like I'm not, I don't go shop there by the way. Like I just, I, I, in the mall you have like that, you know, downtown you can walk through it to the outside. And you look at the pretty stuff. Right, yeah, you know. Um, but I mean like, you know, you, you look at a vase in there, it's like, well, this is 200 bucks for a vase. <laughs> Who would buy this? What people do, obviously, because it's still there. But you take that same vase and move it into a thrift store, it's worth two bucks. I mean, why, why is it all of a sudden 1% worth what it was before? Well, it's because like they're selling the vibe, like they're selling the, like the essence of what it's like to purchase something at Pottery Barn. Uh, thrifty people know how to work around that, but the rest of us don't. <laughs> so if you can imagine like you're adding a, a essence and a vibe of what it's like to work with you, 
Uh, I mean, that's why, you know, color schemes are important or like a general tone, like things that people can latch on to. Like for me, it's my, my charm and my personality. Um, <laughs> yeah, beard. Beardland, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Some shape. Okay. Um, but it doesn't have to be that. Like you don't have to be funny to be great on social media. Being funny is one thing that you can do, but you can be interesting. You can be clever. You can, like it doesn't even have to be your face. Like like uh, your face is one part of potential branding. But like uh, I mean, you can see people all the time. Like they'll have their camera pointed at a table, and their hands will be doing something or showing something in front of the the screen or whatever. Like there's so many things that you could do to start implementing the the branding and finding a cross point between the thing that you want to sell and the people that you want to serve. What, where is the intersection? So I, if I could give you one, like one thing that I think is the most fun thing to do is that right there is what, what is the intersection between the fun thing that you like to talk about and the thing that you want to sell? There is a cross point between there. So uh, an example that I like to bring up is because it was a lot of fun to make and I, I, I intend to make more of these in the future. Um, I really like Legend of Zelda. <laughs> Anybody else here? No? Okay. Thank you. I got you. Two. Okay. Um, we know who the nerds are. Okay. I, I love the franchise and the last two games they made were just absolutely brilliant. They're the, some of the best video games ever. Um, and I was thinking about... Uh, Okay, if, if I wanted to make a video of the home buying process, but I didn't want it to be boring, how would you do that? Like, okay, but if I wanted to attract my tribe to me, oh, well, I, I could make a video of what would happen if, say, we were purchasing Link's house that you, you do buy in the game, but you could, you could do it with, like, different elements in the game, too. Like, so, uh, n none of it would make sense, but, like, you, you can... Uh, you know, if you haven't played the game, but you can relate it back to those points of interest. Like, hey, I'm in Hyrule, and I'm going to go buy this house that you do buy in this game. And then we go over here, and then we collect the pieces of wood, and then we put the wood into escrow, and then we have to give the earnest money, and then we do the inspection period, and then we have, you know, you can relate that all back to the thing that's fun to talk about, and then that general group would find interesting. You know, if we were talking about like people that like to go snowboarding or fishing or whatever use your example home as the thing that is related to your your target audience like if your channel is about fishing talk about a home that might be more advantageous for somebody that likes to be fishing off and like what kind of storage would you need and then relate that back to the uh you know if, if you're if you're holding fishing poles and you need a freezer and i don't you know fishing i don't i don't know anything about fishing but i, mean, I think you guys get what i mean right like if, if you can find that point of interest and connect it to the thing that you're selling. And again, that, that's not going to be every video. Like the 80-20 rule, because I'm referencing 80-20 rule, cool. So the 80-20 rule works with videos as well. So if you can find your general topic, 80% of it is fun, 20% of it is selling, that's where you're going to start to find a lot of that magic sauce. And again, you're, you're creating conversation inside that target audience of people that like to watch your stuff, will go back to your stuff, want to keep on watching your stuff. Like, and then within that, that's where you're going to find that target audience to sell to. Um, and then beyond that, I'd say that uh, just focus on the, the quantity over quality because quantity leads to quality. Just like practicing scales on your guitar leads to better playing. You have to make stuff to find out what works. So just go out there and make stuff and be dumb. It's okay. No one's going to care. <laughs> how do you take, talk about a little bit conversion. Like, mm -hmm. how do you take a dumb video that was fun to make and mm -hmm. turn that into a, um, you know, a, I want to buy, sell, invest with Jake because of that video? Yeah, like I said, mo most of my success, I think, has been in re engaging with my current audience. Um, so I keep on pulling my current clients back into me with it because they like to talk about it or they, they, it's like, it's more of a warm opening to past clients, current clients, people in my sphere. Um, and I'm, I'm just like, Matt's done a more, let me just be blunt with you guys. Matt's done a better job at like actually converting from social media. Said so I've gotten quite a few leads from it 
and I've converted some. Um, but I think part of it is just finding out a good ratio of like, here's my entertainment, and then here's my 20% ask. So I, like for me, I'd, I'd rather focus on, and this, this is just where I want to see this build for me. I'm focusing more on building a, a national thing that I can uh, either get referrals from or, or, you know, if I wrote a book, then be able to sell it to them. Like that's, that's something that I, is more of a long-term goal for me. And the sales that I get from it are kind of a byproduct, I think. Um, but if I, was, if I was really focusing on like, I, I want sales in my area right now, I, again, think about it as building assets. Like you're building something that is worth something. It might be a penny, it might be less than a penny, but that over time does build on itself. Um, you know, if you're making a small video every day for a year, you're gonna have some kind of reputation and that's gonna have some kind of dollar value assigned to it. It's once you make that first sale from it, then you can say, okay, for every so many videos I make, that's worth this much. So I think part of that's experimentation and you just sort of figure out where it's. I, I do notice that, at least on TikTok, it's probably the same for all of them. When I make an ask, I'm more likely to get some kind of response. So, can figure figure out what works first, and then make asks. I probably like ask that too. Like Jake and I might be a little bit different on this set. Like I don't want to contradict them, but like uh, I'm big like get it off social media. Like somebody messaged you, great. Get it mm -hmm. off social media. Like you got to figure out whatever that like sales funnel is for you. But it's like to me, if somebody's like direct messaging me and they're like, hey, like I'm thinking about buying a house, blah blah blah, whatever, cool. What's your number? Off Facebook. Mm -hmm. Like, I want their phone number. I want an appointment schedule, whatever. I tell I tell people all the time, or like, what I try to coach on too is like, deals don't happen in text message, right? So it's like, we have to meet in person. Yep. We have to have a transactional meeting, like whatever. Like, get it on social media. Immediately. So for me, a lot of that is like, somebody messages me, and then I use a service called Calendly, um, which is a super cool like service that lets people like both of you. If anybody doesn't have it, which I would recommend it. But I just sent him a link. <laughs> like, hey man, this is like too big of a conversation for social media. Like, let's meet up, let's grab a beer, whatever. Like, literally my link is like coffee, beer, or whatever. <laughs> it's like, somebody wants a phone call, great. Somebody wants to grab a beer, great. Somebody wants to get a coffee, great. But it's like, I get that off social media as fast as I can. And then what I think Jake's really referring to is like, if you're posting more content, out, actually calling your prospects to follow up with them. Mm -hmm. Like, I get people all the time just from like, you, I, mean, I refer to it a little bit, but like those weekly posts, I'll be like, hey man, sorry, I haven't touched base. Like, no, you've been super busy, man. Like, you're good. Like, yeah, I was just waiting on you to like, uh, or vice versa, right? Like, they were just waiting for them to be ready, but I didn't have to call them every single 12 days because that's what my CRM said to, right? But I was still following up with them just by being consistent on social. So I was getting the, social media. On Facebook in particular, if, if you get your friends and your followers, to interact with your posts more often, then your posts become more of a priority to their feed. Yep. So it, it is important, like like that, uh, you're super consistent about the the weekly update, and people are expecting that, and they want to see it, which is why I've interacted with it probably 20 times now. I'm not sure how many times, but um, like it always shows up in my feed. And probably a lot of people here it does whenever you do your weekly update, it's super consistent, super concise, and people know what's happening in your story. Now you have this community of Matt Bruniites <laughs> that <laughs> want to know what the story is. Like that's, people are connected to story, not sales. So make what you do, whether, whether it's a, a personal story, a story about clients, uh, even like, So, uh, I, I, I can get philosophical on you. I think this is ingrained into the 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 personal uh, psyche of people. Um, that's how we're built by God. I think is that we we see and we feel story very like uh, personally, right? So there is a certain pattern that resonates really well, which is why. Every book since Time Memoriam, every movie, uh, any, every song, um, you could probably make an argument for every painting, gives you this impression where you have some kind of starting point 
tension, and then release. So the, the item we're talking about, whether it's like we're following Matt on his journey, every week is kind of like has this impression and you'll see these moments of successes. So this might like repeat over and over again, but it's the sense of like st starting theme, build, tension, release. And that's like jokes are set up this way. Like, so even if it's like a 15 joke, second joke with a hook, like the, the reason I reference this is because like this, this is the Bible in a nutshell. I think that's, that's how God wired our DNA. So this is really important to me in terms of like a, and nobody came here for a philosophical, theological lesson, but like the, <laughs> I, I, I think that's why this is so incredibly important that as you're practicing making content, you know, for me, for me, like if I'm, if I'm just need, need to like make something really quick, uh, like I'll pull up home tours on TikTok and then make a duet of my reaction to that home tour. But internally I'm thinking like, how can I make this kind of story arc through here? So it could be story, broadly speaking, it could be a book, it could be a, an actual story, it could be an experience, it could be a joke, it could be a song, it could be any kind of motion that has this sort of effect, I think will have a higher chance of success, especially like, I mean, memes have the same effect. So that's why they're, they're grading great testing tools to see what topics will take off. Yeah, any questions? <laughs> yeah. I think you're absolutely right. Um, obviously speaking about your 80, 20, a little bit, mm -hmm. um, when I tell my clients the same thing, it, it's pretty much the same thing, but my, I do 70, 20, 10. So cool. 70% providing value, being funny, 20% uh, personal, because people want to know, like, and trust you in yep. content, right? And that's exactly what you're talking about with, like, weaving a personal story into it. People want to know who you are. They don't, they don't care what you're selling if they don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. um, and then just 10% sales, honestly, just 10% asking for business. And then, so 70, 20, 10 is what I preach, but. That's great. Yeah, close us know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So I'll be vulnerable or whatever, right? Yeah. I would post more on social media, but that shit gives me anxiety. Yeah. How would you get over that? Specifically, like, in this Yeah. What, what about it gives you anxiety? Just people's reactions, how their voice sounds, how to look on camera, certain angles, the lighting. I could go on and on. Not perfect, just done. I'm trying to prove it more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, if if I'm going to be vulnerable ba back, my my answer is pray, turn it to God. Um, the I think pragmatic answer is the more you do it, the less you care. Um, I just that's the reality of it. Like if if you're doing it a lot, like like you're posting, I'll bet. I mean, just like like making phone calls, right? It was super anxiety inducing when I first started real estate. The more I did it, the less I cared. So I don't really like, like picking up the phone, but I'll do it. It's part of my daily habits. You pick up your phone like, okay, if, if you have a to-do list, I just have video at the top because that's like the one thing that I can do that has like continuing results through the day and beyond. Like in some sense, it feels more important than the phone call to me. So I like, although my coach says that I should flip it because I, it's easier for me to make video. <laughs> but if I'm like, if I'm trying to prioritize and start making video, I would say put the video at the front end because that's the thing that you're dreading the most. Um, and it may end up having results if it's a good video or a good piece of content and you know, it could be a Facebook post or an Instagram post or whatever. There's a chance the people that you're calling, if you're calling internal to your sphere, will have seen it and it will help the conversation. Hard things first. Yeah, hard things first. So, can I do that real quick? Yeah. Um, for anyone who hasn't done a video, your first, first video is going to be awful. It's going to suck. Oh, yeah. Just, just get used to the suck, honestly. Um, and then at, over time, you just start getting more comfortable with it. And the more comfortable you get, the easier it gets. Mm -hmm. so. uh, I'd say, like, that, that's why the home tour duets. Uh, anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. that? Okay, so just ser search on TikTok or wherever. Um, TikTok's the easiest to do it. I'm not sure if the other platforms will let you do that anymore, but it's where it splits the screen in half and you have to turn your volume. If you don't have headphones then you have to turn the volume all the way down and turn the microphone on. Um, 
or if you don't want to talk, just keep the microphone off and just nod. Like just just get over it. Like it's it's okay. Nobody cares. Just get in the process of like your face next to houses. Start giving commentary. And no matter how bad it is, just post it. Nobody cares. Especially like if you're going on a TikTok. No one you know is going to see it, most likely. No, nobody cares, and it's a great testing platform to see, does this actually work or not? So I just, just go for it. Jeremy, maybe you can add to this. Do you have any like metrics or success stories from like, clients or anything like that that you could share? Um, no real metric, honestly. Like I tell people, screw the algorithm. Like, like you guys are saying, like, don't worry if it's on Sunday, don't worry if it's at 12 a.m., mm -hmm. right? If it doesn't work, maybe try posting it later. Or chop it up, do it again. Um, mm -hmm. And then you start learning, like, what works with your content, because Jake's message is going to be different than Matt's, it's going to be different than Larry's, it's going to be different than everybody else's message, right? So, again, just be your authentic self, and that stuff is going to shine through and make it personable and make it relatable. And then, you know, people will follow along with your journey because you're somebody that they know, like, and trust. I made 10 bucks on Facebook. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so obviously they think I'm doing something right. There we go. <laughs> um, I don't know, hope, that, hope that was helpful. That's the stuff that I, I really geared toward. I just like focusing on stuff that I like to talk about and it feels like that tends to be a lot easier. But if you're just like trying to get over the hump, just like do the easiest thing possible especially if you want to focus on video, find that thing that you could do every day. I find response videos are often really easy because it's just you responding to something that somebody else already did. Um, so it's like, like the wheels turn a little bit easier. Um, so I don't know, who wants to go make a video? <laughs> yeah. I assume that you post on YouTube and on the website as well too. Uh, mo mostly just the video platforms. Our, our website is in transition. Um, so I'll, I'll, what I have been, I've, tr I've tried a few different things. I, I'd like to, I've been trying to get people to go to my website and sign up, but I have had seen the most success with, um, getting people to either go into my DMS on TikTok or, um, sending them over to a Facebook group to the community that I want to target. So if you can find a really like investor community, man, that like that would be so much easier on those platforms if you had that way to like funnel people into a way that feel felt very like there's no tension here um that's the hardest part about like transitioning from one platform to another it's like if you can say hey if you're interested in learning more about this comment on comment on this video or subscribe and learn more like you're just getting them to the the next step of trusting you which is to engage and then after that, it might be go join the Facebook group. And then in the Facebook group or still on TikTok, like you're, it's like, you know, if you're talking to a client, right? And you have their uh, email, their phone number, you've met in person, you're talking, you're messaging them on Facebook. Like they're a lot more likely to transact if you have multiple points of contact, right? So it's kind of like that same idea on social media. At least that's how I think about it. If I'm doing videos and they start engaging with me on different media platforms, you know, maybe, you know, pick your one and then maybe send it back over to Facebook or keep it on Facebook. Those seem to be the easiest. Face Facebook groups are killer. Okay. Yeah. There's this group called Spokane Real Estate Investors on Facebook. I can't remember who runs it. It's dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you just sit there and like think of content ideas all the time or do you just like rattle them off? I think that's where a lot of people get hung up is like, yeah, so I, I think that way you kind of just progress into that and it's like, oh, I never thought of that. Yeah, no, it's more like, um, I have two different buckets for me. So I have things I'm like, oh man, this would be so fun to make like a music video. Um, or like, okay, the next listing I get, I'm dressing up as Bigfoot and then sh showing the home as Bigfoot. You know, like, like those are the things like I'm, I'm thinking ahead of and like, how can I make this as funny as possible to get more people to view it? Like that's like, there's a segment of my videos. I'm like, I just want to make such good videos and make the videos be the end product. Like not even think about it as like a real estate thing. It's just, I want a good video, but in a way like that, that's a better 
strategy than just trying to make a sale all the time. Um, or think about your channel that way. The, the other kind of content that I make, I'm like, oh, I gotta make a video today, or it's been a few days, I just need to think of something. So <laughs> just like, it could be as simple as, um, okay, Google, show me a real estate joke. Yep. Or uh, find a home tour video and do something off that. Or a lot of my YouTube content, especially my shorts, um, here, I, I'll show you the most recent one because you know, I know it's gonna be hard for you guys to see, but bear with me. I think the point will be made as long as it loads. Cue the Jeopardy theme. <laughs> Almost there. Talking about like worlds colliding though, uh, like my best, like my most viewed video was like, me in a flamingo suit with a wee by house this time. Yep. Like, yep. You know, and it works because it was both things. Yep. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm apologetically you, right? Right, exactly. And you were selling, yep. you found that perfect little niche. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'll just do the one that I was, I was referencing earlier. So if you're going through, and this is, I think is all of them. It's a little bit harder on Instagram, but TikTok and YouTube, you can do this pretty easily. Is if you're scrolling through shorts and you see a video that you're like, oh, I can relate this to my thing, then do that. Cause that, that often is the easiest way to go about it. Like a lot of my content is I'll see somebody like do some crazy stunt and I'll, and I'll just like put my case up to my ear and be like, Oh yeah, so how much did you get for uh, your your insurance claim? Oh, <laughs> so we're gonna go buy a house then, that's pretty cool. You know, like dumb stuff like that. But you know, it's what's nice about it is if you see a video that has like a million likes, and then you know that that opening is really good, you know that opening of that video is super solid. So there's a good chance that if you, if you go down to the remix button on YouTube and hit the, I forget what they call, let me see if I can find out. I'll open up the video that I want to show you first. Oh, of course, now the video is not loading. Okay. Okay, the, the remix button. Oh, what'd you do? Oh, gosh. Okay. Are you guys on Wi Fi? Yeah. Okay. I'm not. Was there a Wi Fi? Oh, shoot. Darn it. <laughs> um, okay, well, at the bottom, there's a little two arrows. It says remix. Just hit that button, and then there's like a clip button um, that you can choose, and just add your little bit at the end. Um, again, if the the what the algorithm does, I mean, when you hear the word algorithm, this is like all the the big YouTube people or social media people. When you hear the word algorithm, think uh, audience. If the audience likes the video, your watch time will be higher, and they gauge how much they should syndicate that video out or push that video out based on watch time and engagement, watch time being the highest. Okay, let's see. So here's the start of the video if it loads. Okay, okay, there we go. Okay. Okay, this is actually some brilliant marketing. I have no idea if these guys work for the store or not. But if you did own a store, why wouldn't you do stuff like this? I'll show you the beginning again. For a good story for somebody else later. Hey, Dave, did I ever tell you about that one time that I walked into ABC store and the, the owners there, somebody that works there, scared the crap out of me by dressing up as mannequin. I mean, they've been talking about that for years. Wouldn't you want that kind of mental share? I bet you would. But anyway, give me a subscribe if you want to talk about fun marketing. So, okay, I, just, I just stole the beginning of somebody else's video, which is a function that YouTube, TikTok, and all those have. It already has a good opening, so just steal it. It helps their video out, so they'll be happy. You'll be happy because you'll have a really good opening to your video. So don't worry about being unique or creative. Just like do the easy thing and start getting stuff out there. You don't have to have a listener. Yeah. Either one of you guys use chat GPT. Mm -hmm. Chat G. PT, right? Yeah. In your marketing. I have before. Okay. Um, and sometimes I'll, I'll do it like real super shamelessly. So I'll be like, um, write me a script of Spokane and Seattle talking, uh, arguing about which one's better or who has the best coffee. And then I'll open the video and be like, Here, here's a script of Spokane and Seattle talking that ChatGPT gave me. And then I'll play both parts.
So and often stuff like that, like that kind of vulnerability, breaking that that wall, the third wall, um, helps your audience feel engaged with your content. Is my suspicion. But it also can generate ideas for you. So if you're like, give me thirty ideas to make real estate content on geared toward investors, and you can make each one, and then on YouTube. You can say, post this today, post this one tomorrow, post this one the day after, post it, and just schedule out your entire month of content in one day, in an hour or two. I just wanted to add on like, the content creation stuff too. Like, so Grant Cardone's not my favorite person ever, but since <laughs> uh, like he basically said like, you are the content. Like your day-to-day life is the content. Mm -hmm. Like yes, you can create other stuff, but like your day-to-day -day life is more interesting than you think. Like you are the content. So it's like if you just left a seller appointment, that's a post. Like if you got a new listing, that's a post. If you didn't get a new listing, that's a post. Like if you're helping a buyer find a house and interest rates are crazy right now, whatever, that's a post. If you attended this class today, that's a post. Like what are your key takeaways? Your golden nuggets, right? Yep. So it's like your day to day life is so much more interesting, quote unquote, than mm -hmm. any people really give themselves credit for. So it's like everything you do could be a post. And yeah, I think it's kind of toxic to think that way. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but like most of my posts or most of my content creation is literally just in the moment. Oh, I hung up on the phone with Ali talking about interest rates. And then I post on Facebook like, holy shit, interest rates are high. Or like, I don't understand how a real estate investor could buy a cash flowing property today because interest rates are so high. Does anybody have any ideas of like strategies around that? Like the base point of it is like, you are the content, not the But also, you're Jake, and I wanted to add this too. Sorry, it doesn't say really But like, so he found a really good performer post, and then he added his entrepreneurial swing to it. So now, like, let the algorithm do its thing. Like, we know it's a successful post, and then the algorithm's going to show that successful post to more people that are interested in entrepreneurship, because that's just what the algorithm does. Does so that make sense? Just find your cross points of interest and you'll have a lot more to talk about. If you think in just real estate, it'd, it'd be super hard sometimes to think of like unique content. Like there's 30 things you can say about like a real estate transaction, let's say. And it's super boring and dry and nobody wants to listen to it and you want to kill yourself at the end. Sorry. <laughs> um, but if you... if <laughs> You can just bleep that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but if you have real estate in Zelda, or real estate in Mario, or real estate in The Matrix, or really like, just like, like, I'm not sure why The Matrix came up, but uh, you know, hiking, now, that'd be great. Like, talk about selling like property with hiking trails on it. Like, that would be extremely interesting. Yeah, of course, you sell more than just that. But like, if you focus on that for your content. Like you'd get all the people that you want to talk to because they're hikers and, and most of them will still want to probably buy just a regular property because like who wants to actually build? But people like to daydream about buying land. So you'd get all the people that want to daydream about buying land. Like so find the intersection. If I can have about chat. Danae Hornberg, I don't know if any of you know her, but she, uh, we were talking about social media and I was like, I was like, what kind of things do you like to talk about? She's like, I really like chickens. Okay, cool. You should do that instead of, of real estate videos because you love talking about it. And she like started making videos about her chickens and like it's, it's her social media presence is like taking off because now she's collecting all the people that want to talk about chickens. And like how, like how much more easy could that be to talk about real estate and the thing like there's so many things about real estate and chickens. Like that's the perfect topic. I mean, like all of a sudden, HOAs become a really important topic because you love chickens, and you you could even like like be touring properties and be like, this house is chicken approved, and take a chicken with you. <laughs> yeah, me and me and Bessie here are gonna go take a look at uh, this house. You know, and start right. <laughs> like just start doing home tours, but always. That would be hilarious, and and everybody would know who like uh, a, a good way to think about it is if you can pass the uh, the uh, tip of the tongue test, like oh yes, that real estate agent that that carries chickens with her, you know, if if they can describe your content rather than like know exactly who you are, like if you if you're that unique, again like the purple cow, I don't know the purple cow's name, but 
like I'm able to describe it, and everybody knows what I'm talking about now. By the way, don't think about the purple cow, right? <laughs> like, so, and, and that's kind of like a, a good, if, if you're looking for content, by the way, saying the negative is often a better way to get started, and it creates more buzz. So, like how easy would it be for you to make a video saying, you should not buy a house, and here's why. Like, and you're still talking about your, your, your thing that you want to sell. You're not talking about buying it, though. You're talking about not buying it. And people have to, ar like, the people that will want to buy will have to argue with you about why they should buy. And then they're your clients, right? <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, as a side note, speak to the negative, and you'll have a lot more content as well. And people find that more interesting. Yeah. What's that? The news is full of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, what I mean is, like, if, if you're talking about um, why should you get a loan in this economy, you know, or, like, pe people say, you know, date the right, marry the home, like, like say, what, like, maybe why you don't like that. Like, hey, well, we don't know r really if the rates will ever come down. You should be comfortable with your rate if you have it, which and a lot of you can't afford it right now. A lot of you would be working on your debt first before you buy a home. You know, but that that's more interesting than somebody just trying to convince you to buy a home too. Um, it's more like random content ideas, but um, yeah, I can go on today if, if you guys have like more, more questions. I'm not sure, even sure how much time I have. I know. <laughs> yeah. I will say, like, for anyone like that still can't figure out how to make a piece of content. Uh, there's plenty of resources like this at ChatGPT, great source to generate it. There's like mm -hmm. a thing called, it's called the Content Pillars Worksheet. If you just type it in on Google, it's basically got five pillars and these are the five things you want to talk about. And at the other side, it's like, you know, there's case studies, there's interviews, and there's this. And then you just interweave these lines. Mm -hmm. Do I want to talk about God and the case study? Do I want to talk about real estate and the how-to? Like, And you start just connecting these dots. Yep. And, and it just makes it super easy to come up with ideas. Yep. Yep, and if anyone needs one, I have those. I can email them, or again, Google just has them for free as well. So, if you're, if you're spending time with academics and they're writing dissertations, it's probably a terrible example because who does that? Um, but you'll notice like a lot of dissertations are like that, where they have um, here's the primary topic in in this uh, v viewed as this standpoint, right? Um, I was just talking with a buddy of mine who's like, here here's this uh, system talked about in the lens of this uh, vocabulary. Um, so if you find, again, the, a, a, I thought it was really a cool example was I was watching this guy who's a video game designer, designer and um, he had different puzzles that he was trying to make. So he, he created all these uh, mechanisms in this video game. He's like, how do I turn these into puzzles? So what he did is he built like a grid of, here's all the mechanics and he, put each mechanic up here and then each mechanic up here and then he just found well what's the intersection between these two things and then all of a sudden a puzzle was super obvious from there it's like well th often that's all you need is just find your topic is always real estate or real estate investing and your interest is bicycles where where, where do those two line up and it might be kind of a struggle for you to t think about that first at first, but like the more you do it, the easier it's going to be to start talking about those two things. And the style is going to come out more, and you're going to have a lot of ideas, and it's going to be a lot more fun. I'm almost tempted because we got, I think, a lot of times still we could have like everybody go take a tour and or just out there and make a home tour video or some kind of thing, or 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 go over there and and make a quick video. Should we? Jump up at once. I know. Like, yeah, what's the audience feeling? <laughs> yeah, how are you guys? I don't know. How, how are you guys feeling? Are, are, are you feeling like more motivated or more scared to make videos? Or how are you guys feeling? Motivated. motivated? Yeah. Cool. So if I came to you today and said, let's make a video right now, you're going to come back to with me? You're looking straight at me. I don't know who's talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Real great content that I could think of. That, you yeah. know the best piece of content this for your thing ever is? Right hey, this is who I am. This is what I do. I'm excited to talk about this stuff. Continue the journey. We'll talk later. Simplify so far. Are you worried more about 
long format or short at the moment. So like, you know, it, it's, you know, I hear you guys say make a video. I have videos ready, like prime, like you already do them right, but like, it's more of what if it's the wrong information or what if it's too long? I get what you said, yeah. post it now, because that was really good as far as just do it. But, you know, maybe some of us are just right there as well. Like, we have it, but... Uh, let's say if, if you have it... Target? Should we be targeting real? Should we be targeting shorts? Should we target targeting video? Like, right, right now, mm -hmm. I'm kind of here as... I should just be doing some videos and don't worry about the shorts, because I think I'm getting too technical about the short. I mean, I, I like the short form to start, because it helps you test the things that you need to test before investing more time into a long form. If you have long forms, just post them. Um, but shorts, you can like, you can pump them out in like three minutes. Yeah. Like, like if you just get in that habit of, I'm going to do this, the first one might take you 20 minutes and it's gonna be very frustrating and you're gonna hate it. You're going to hate it. But if you just, if you make one a day, you, the first one takes you 20 minutes, the next one takes you 17, then 15, and then you work down to a, a good simple formula that takes a lot less time. Like right now I could, I could pull out my phone, make a video in front of you guys, and it would still take me probably three to five minutes to do it. Are you just using CapCut? Uh, either CapCut or just in-app. If, if I have something I really want to try at all the platforms, I'll do that, but like my focus is YouTube. Um, I really want my YouTube channel to be like as good as it possibly can be. And then TikTok is kind of like, um, either one of them, but uh, both of those to me seem like to, the easiest to make the content on platform. So I wouldn't worry so much about CapCut right now, just like focus on the one that you want to make videos on, that you connect with the most. If it's Instagram, do Instagram, doesn't matter. Did you start, you said you did yours on Facebook or was it Matt? I, I, do, I started the short form stuff on TikTok um, and then and I, I know quite a few agents that do really well on TikTok and get, you know, I, I actually got, got a referral that I'm working with right now from a connection that I made. My like part of it is like you, if you're on social media, like TikTok in particular, you're also meeting other agents that do this a lot and then get referrals from them. So a lot of it's like networking. So I, like if, if you think about it, like just not, not as like the warm relationship to the buyer if you're making a lot or buyer or seller if you're making good content that other agents are drawn to as well well now you're creating a, a new referral source from agents that are now familiar with you and your area and your content um so you start a new page or you go off the same one like let's say facebook or instagram did you go off that same, did you use that as your launching platform or did you do something different so you could separate the two? Like, like where, where are you at now? Because I, I don't know, like where were you in the beginning? Mm -hmm. Did you just launch off one? Did you eventually separate it? Like for, for all my auxiliary platforms, like, like, like this not Facebook, I just have like, it's me and just use my name. Um, it's, I think it's, it's more important, like whatever brand you want to push. So for Matt, it might be Lily or also it might, it might be you as well. So this can either be a brand or you. Um, so if you want to focus on TikTok, I would just have the one account with your focus. It's all about like the, the focus of the channel. If it's Facebook, um, I, I've, so far I've had pretty good success with both, uh, having like a page and my personal account. Um, what you'll probably want if you use your personal account on Facebook and if you want to focus there, you'll probably want to become a digital creator See, so it's just you're turning your personal profile into a creator page. Um, I think the one downside to that is it makes, uh, like if you want to push an ad, it makes it a little bit more difficult from your personal page. But also I get more personal engagement from the people that are in my sphere on my personal page. So uh, it, it kind of just depends on what you want to put your time into. I don't think it really matters. Um, what, what you put your time into is what you're going to get good at. Yeah, I wouldn't like overthink it until it's like so vastly out of your hands that like you can like hire somebody to like take it to that next level if that makes sense. Like it's depending on like where you're at, but it's like like for me now, it's like I'm running into this problem of like everybody only wants to work with Matt Burger, nobody wants to work with Lily. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's like when I'm building my brand now, everybody's like, oh, I want Matt, I want Matt, I want Matt, and I'm like, but what about Lily? <laughs> no one goes Lily, you know. Like I've never heard of her, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> so, so, so you, is it, okay, so that would be the question I might be asking then. So, yeah. 
did you, are you, that's where I'm at. So like, I have to separate it for me, for, you know, for some of those who do know me, I am entitled, but I have to separate okay. the two because I cannot promote anyone because of the rules. So like, I have to like, and I'm wondering, like, just like what you said, did you find that now they know you, but not Lily? I mean, it's like, it's an interesting transition, right? So for me, it was a tweak in my sales model. So for me, it wasn't necessarily a branding issue. It was just a tweak in the sales model, right? So it's like now, instead of like somebody being like, oh, I'm scheduling an appointment with Matt, or like, I'm going to Matt's boot camp, or I'm going to Matt's investment class, or Matt's promotional class, it's like, no, you're going to Lilly University's class. So it's like, for me, I just had to tweak that like sales model and tweak that messaging to just make it super clear that like this is a Lily thing, right? Because for me, it's like my goal in three years is like I don't, I mean, three months. Like I kind of want to be out of production as far as like real estate, like realtor stuff goes. But to be able to do that, I think like Lily, it's not that. that makes sense. So I think it kind of depends on like your ending goal or end in mind of like what you want to promote. But like I said, I wouldn't overcomplicate it until like, you kind of have to. Because it'd be easier to like fix something with like you have tons of engagement than like worry about it now. Okay. A really good way to, to test different communities, by the way, is like, I was talking to a financial advisor about this. He really likes golf. And, you know, in, in the financial advising world, it's like really difficult to advertise yourself, right? There are rules and regulations about how to promote your services and, and you have to get things approved by your company before you can post stuff. It's like, well, that's stupid. <laughs> but on the other hand, like, it, I, I think if you understand how connections work like psychologically from one person to another it doesn't matter if you can't give your advice professionally over a camera what matters is they know the service that you provide in a given context um so for him i just like what if you just started like a, a spokane golfers club because he loves golfing on like uh, or a group and like just go as a group once a month and like lo and behold, like, they're, like they're, he's super active on it. They got like 500 members, and now like they're all networking together inside this golfing group. And he's got like three other admin that help him run this page. So like groups can be a really good way to like, okay, if I want to serve the cooking people that like cooking in Spokane, but are, like really into it, could I make a Spokane Chefs Facebook group? Uh, keep it public, post memes in there, and then share that post to my personal page and then my friends will join the group because they saw that there was a post from this group on my page and like those groups start growing naturally just by creating smaller pieces of content in those groups so a good way to grow online is to create a group that you're like I would love to meet more of these people that are interested in this thing I don't think a flamingo lovers in Spokane is gonna take off. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you actually like flamingos, or is that just like an idea? Yeah, it uh, just kind of started off like at my old job. Uh, we just had fun Fridays, and I wanted to bring like a Hawaiian vibe in the winter time because like it was it's so dead. It's no there we color. go. Okay, there we go. H Hawaiian vibe. Hawaiian vibe. But I didn't have a Hawaiian shirt. All I had was a flamingo. Okay, shirt. but Fridays. Uh. I want to be in Hawaii, Spokane. Yeah. yeah. So like that that's the kind of thing that like I I want these people. I want the people that want to wear the Hawaiian shirts and say aloha and you know have a uh, Hawaiian barbecue in the winter or, or you know, like maybe make that a thing. Like that could be a, a literal event. You could say Hawaiian barbecue in the winter. Okay. Invite people to that. Like people would like kill for that kind of interaction because if that's the sort of thing that you get really excited for or even just like may maybe the vibe is less hawaiian and more uh friday life spokane you know <laughs> like, sure. like you know casual friday spokane or you know whatever yeah, yeah. like th think about like who who would you attract by creating this sort of group and you can test different titles for the groups and <laughs> like that doesn't really matter that much it's just say the most obvious title and then you can tweak it over time to see what's more effective. Like I have a group that's titled uh, a group where we pretend to be members of the same choir. It's got 15,000 members. I just have it. I don't really market it, but like it's probably like 16,000 now. Um, there's like a few hundred members that are added on every month and it just, it sits there and it grows and it just, I have a degree in music, so it just came out of nowhere. But, 
I probably could, and I've had this thought, start marketing myself as a realtor, even though it's a global audience, I could probably start marketing myself as a realtor in the US and Canada and just get those referrals and send them out. And I'm like the most well-known face in that group of 15,000 people because I'm, uh, what I love about Facebook groups, and I was here to talk about video, but what I love about Facebook groups is you can set automations. Freaking fantastic. If, if you create a group, go to admin assist, like you have to go up to the little, well, on your, on your side it'd be over here. <laughs> if you're looking at your computer, there's like a little shield icon uh, on your phone or on your computer. And uh, you just go to admin assist and then say, I want a weekly welcome post. And then every other week I want this post. And then, and just create these automated posts that just regularly are updating um, or, or are posting for you. And again, it's, it's creating that familiarity within that community that you're building. And that's a great place to post your videos as well. So fa Facebook is super powerful. Like, like uh, I do a lot on Facebook still, even though I, I love video. I, I still think that finding a community for your videos, which is why like a, a lot of things I'm doing are for entrepreneurs, because I'm one of the admin on the Spokane business page. It's a, such a long name. I hate saying it all. <laughs> Spokane Small Business and Entrepreneurs Facebook group. Um, so like I'm, I'm serving one of the largest audiences that I have in Spokane naturally. I'm just trying to find the intersection between entrepreneurship and things that I like and, hey, I'm a realtor. So and, uh, how much do, do, does a Facebook group sound less intimidating or more intimidating than making videos? Less. Less? So I think that if, if I was just going to choose one thing to do today, maybe it's that, like, Facebook groups, you can set up automations so you can like uh, test a few things in there, but you can stay consistent in it just by the automations that you build and then hands off and then post in there when you feel like it. But those things will grow without you having to put a lot of time into them. One thing to also say about Facebook groups is you can like require like a phone number and email like for them to join your group. Mm -hmm. Like kind of a cool thing. Yep. Get people's contact info. 100%. So, full disclaimer, I don't, I don't want to be the guy, that guy that sits in the back of the room and, and, and tries to give advice that nobody really wants, so I, I, I apologize no, please. for first. Um, going back to the YouTube and, and, the, and the Google, Google actually you know, owns YouTube, mm -hmm. and I've got this mentor that, that's, that's been my mentor for like 20 years, Claude Diamond, and he posts tons of videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. and, and I just Googled his, his name. I just, I didn't, you know, obviously I've, I've gone to his site before, but I just put a Claude Diamond and his site is like number one on the top. And right below it, he's got several, several videos that are actually showing up on that page. And, and that's, and actually I, I've, I've got another guy that I follow on, on YouTube as well too. It's, it's called the ReVenture app. And I've been following him pretty, pretty closely for the last few months. And, and I just kind of Googled his name as well too. And his, his name or his, his website comes up first on the on, if you just type reventure, it, gives, it shows up first, and then right below it, he's got several videos as well too. And it's just just something that I think really you know people need to take advantage of is that these guys all you know they're owned by the same company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like uh, it really is powerful. Like like I have this video. It, it's not like. Um, <coughs> crazy popular or anything like that. But I realized like, oh shoot, I should have like, I, I could like go back and focus on these kinds of videos. It's just not where my passion is. I'd rather focus on passion more than profitability because I think that'll pay out longer in the, in the end. Um, but like you legitimately could just go to different areas in Spokane and say Audubon Park and, and just make a video saying, here is Audubon Park. Take a look how beautiful it is. And here's the neighborhoods, drive through the neighborhoods. Isn't it great? Look at all these homes from the 1920s, the 1940s, and some even to the 1960s and 70s. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, look, and here's a cafe. Let's go in and say hi. Here's my cup of coffee. Yay. And it'll get regular views. Like I made a video about Chini, I was referencing earlier, uh, like two years ago. And it's still getting regular views just because there's no there's no videos about Chini, <laughs> or there's like three. So if if you go around town and just start making videos about different places in Spokane, and then say, click below and 
let's get your house over here or something like that. <laughs> like, like just because it's it's searchable and uh, there's low competition, it's your unfair advantage just by focusing on an area. And maybe it is like maybe it's Audubon and you're always making videos about Audubon because you know there's, there's a certain certain segment of the population or Perry District that are is always talking about Perry District. You could just focus on there. It, it'll get like 20 views, but it's going to be a very specific 20 views. So I think that's about all I got. Um, but I'll hang around if you guys have questions and go from there.